Hello, and welcome or welcome back to the AGF Design Studio channel. My name is Alana. I'm a freelance lettering artist and designer. This video is going to be all about why you need to be using cloud documents if you want to have the most efficient and easiest workflow working on Illustrator for iPad and your desktop. Ready? Let's go. So what is a cloud document? Here are some of the benefits of working with cloud documents. Everything from being able to access your files online, syncing your files simultaneously between devices like your iPad and your desktop, auto-saving in real time, and more. So let's take a look at exactly how we can save our documents in cloud format so that we can use them on both our iPads and desktop. So the good news about working on Illustrator for the iPad is that as soon as you create your file, it'll automatically be saved as a cloud document. So we're just going to start adding some elements here. All right, so now let's say you're ready to save. So to save your document, all you have to do is hit this little arrow. And what I'm going to be looking for is that little green check mark in the bottom right hand corner. That is what tells me that my file is synced and ready to be viewed on any other device. So let's take a look to our desktop. So as you can see, our stars file that we just created on our iPad is available to open and view on our desktop. So it's the same exact file everything is in the same place. You'll also notice that this document, because it's a cloud document, has a little cloud icon next to the name of the file. So let's close this out. Let's create a new file, but starting on our desktop this time. So let's say I'm ready to save this and I want to save it as a cloud document. Just going to go to file, go to save as. So you might be used to seeing this sort of dialog box pop up, but instead of saving it locally to our computer, we're going to hit save cloud document. I'm going to name our document hit save. So now you can see that same little cloud icon is there and it's saved as an AIC file, which is the extension for Adobe Illustrator cloud documents. So I'm going to close this out and pop over back to our iPad. So you can see that this is now a cloud document on my iPad that's ready to be opened. All of these objects are fully editable. I can move them around and start working on this file. An important thing to note for using this workflow is that you do not want to have your documents open on more than one device at a time. So now you might be wondering, what happens when I delete a file? Good question. Or whenever you want to delete a file, you can just hit these three dots and hit delete. Now this document will go to your deleted section where it can be recovered by hitting restore. When you delete it on your iPad, as you can imagine, it'll also delete off of your desktop and go into that same deleted section. So don't be afraid if you accidentally delete a file, you can always recover it. So now that we know how to use cloud documents on our iPad and desktop, how else can we be maximizing this workflow? Let's take a look at version history. I'm going to navigate over to an older document of mine. I'm gonna hit these three dots here 
And at the bottom of this list, I'm just gonna hit view version history. So the cool thing about this feature is that it's exactly what it sounds like. You will be given a list of every auto saved version of this document and each change that was made. As you can see, everything is time stamped. And the cool thing about this feature is that at any moment you can select one of these versions, hit these three dots and hit revert to this version. This is a way that you can go back to that previous version and sort of oh, save yourself. <laughs> and here it'll say end of history and your versions will expire in 30 days. While we're discussing a mobile workflow between your desktop and your iPad, it is good to know some of the limitations that still exist for Adobe Illustrator for the iPad so that you know what features might not translate between your desktop version and your iPad. So let's take a look at that. So as you can see, I've opened up another cloud document on my desktop and I started this one natively on my desktop. I've got two stars, one that's using a 3D extrude and bevel. So I use this 3D classic setting to extrude and bevel. And then on this, I'm using a gradient mesh. So I just use the mesh tool here to add some points to the star and add some color values to give it a kind of cool gradient mesh effect. So I'm gonna close this out. So now I'm going to open that same document on my iPad. So on the surface, everything looks fine. Everything looks the same, but you'll notice I can make edits to this. I can add and remove points and sort of move this around. I can edit the color. So while I can make some changes to it, this is not something that I would be able to create natively in the iPad version of the app. And then interacting with this, I'm going to double tap. So you'll see a little pop-up will appear, object not supported on this device yet. So that's how you'll really be able to see what objects are not yet supported in the iPad version of Illustrator. So just keep an eye out. Note that I can't edit the points like I was able to on the desktop version. I no longer have access to those fine-tuned points in my gradient mesh. I can just move this around. I can shrink it and grow it and do those kinds of things, but I won't be able to change these colors individually like I was on my desktop. Now, the good thing is that once I bring the file back to my desktop, I can pick up right where I left off and all of my features will still be there. So, do you wanna watch more Adobe Illustrator tutorials and learn more about Illustrator for the iPad? Check out my playlist over here. If you haven't downloaded Adobe Illustrator for the iPad yet, click the link in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to leave it a like. Subscribe if you haven't already for weekly videos, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.